welcome to SCZ Live. Today I am in Australia, South America with Dr. Katie Hall and she's going to talk to us a little bit about behavior and how that translates into animal welfare. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Katie Hall and I am the coordinator of animal welfare and behavioral husbandry here at Sedgwick County Zoo. And this afternoon I will be studying developments about our behavior program which is up and coming and uh, so I'll discuss eight goals of our program and if you stay tuned with me all the way through to the end I'll share how you can become involved so it's really important for us to observe animals throughout the zoo in order to collect objective and longitudinal scientific data because it helps us inform animal management decisions and welfare assessments one of our first goals is to establish activity budgets on all of our animals and uh, this is important because um, we can determine whether special events or circumstances cause shifts in behavior patterns. So, for example, to the construction of our entry complex using not only behavioral data, but also hormone monitoring, specifically cortisol, which is a stress hormone, in partnership with Dr. Carrie Moorfeld. So far, our data indicate that the chimps had a strong reaction to the demolition of our entry building in mid-January. And so now we are looking at ways to mitigate that noise coming from construction. Another goal of behavioral monitoring is to of our animals aimed at reducing aggression. So for example, I've been watching male and female interactions of our herd of elephants to determine uh, what appropriate social groupings Another goal is to observe where animals spend time in their habitats in order to inform not only which type of enrichment and where to place it to encourage more exploration, but also to inform any modifications to habitats to encourage visibility so that our guests have a better experience. So an example of this is last summer I spent some time observing our tigers and found that they spend a lot of time along the back perimeter of their habitat in the shade where very few guests can see them. So this led to some discussions about whether to offer more enrichment at the front of the exhibit, whether to expand the public viewing area through construction deeper into the habitat, or whether to build a cave feature closer to the public viewing area that would offer them some shade and offer the guests a better view of the tigers. The next two goals uh, are very different from each other, but the example ties them together. So um, one goal is to learn more about the circumstances influencing the performance of undesirable behaviors so that we may alter those circumstances. And another goal is to evaluate whether enrichment meets our behavioral goals. So part of my job at the zoo is to shift away from enrichment as ticking boxes, like this enrichment was for feeding or this was for manipulation, and to move more towards meeting behavioral goals, like did this enrichment increase scent marking or nesting behavior or brachiation locomotion. So, so Dr. Katie, what is enrichment? Uh, enrichment is uh, something that we give to the animals to encourage natural behaviors. Like I said, uh, you know, like nesting, you can see here our screamer is nesting. And so we try to offer um, additional materials such as these sticks that she's laying in. Uh, sometimes you'll see balls or other toys or exploration. Enrichment comes in many forms and sometimes you can't even see it. So like I mentioned for the tigers, uh, to encourage exploration we will spray different scents around their exhibit to encourage scent marking behavior. Uh, so the example I have with the golden conures that we're standing in front of here is that they are known uh, in the winter when we move them to their indoor barn they increase an undesirable behavior, which is feather plucking. And uh, we give them a lot of extra enrichment to try to curb or mitigate this behavior. And uh, this past winter, I worked with a student at Friends University, shout out to Shelby Martin. And um, she found that actually the birds don't interact at all with the enrichment that we have been giving them in the past. So she took it upon herself to create new enrichment and evaluate its success. And what she found is that um, by presenting food in various puzzles, listening to rainforest sounds, offering outdoor access on warmer days, and giving fresh branches increased their engagement with the enrichment. 
Furthermore, the feather quality on 11 out of the 12 birds stayed the same or improved this winter compared to prior winters when they were all worse. That's great! Yeah, Shelby did a really great job with that project and I'm hoping um, we can continue and expand it in winters to come. Uh, we also are using behavioral monitoring to look at long-term changes in mobility as animals change as they age as well as to inform welfare assessments for which a large amount of longitudinal data are helpful. Our final goal of our up-and-coming animal behavioral monitoring program is to train a cohort of citizen scientists and increase engagement with the Sedgwick County Zoo through partnership with Friends University and other volunteers. So here are two ways that you can become involved. If you're interested in the enrichment aspect, I invite you to visit and donate an item from our wish list, which you can find on our website at scz.org slash donate at the very bottom. And if you're interested in the behavioral data collection aspect, when our zoo resumes normal operations and begins to welcome our volunteers back, you can sign up for a new opportunity to observe the animals using a software app called Zoo Monitor, which was developed by colleagues at Lincoln Park Zoo. Shout out to Dr. Jason Wark. So uh, if you are interested in joining our volunteer team, please reach out to our coordinator, Amy Holly, and uh, I look forward to seeing you back at the zoo soon. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Katie. I really thank appreciate you. you taking time to talk to us today. And remember, everyone, even though we're closed, we're still caring.